Hey there, Steve Brosman here from Business Online TV, and I am promising you a very lively interview this morning because we've got Geraldine Mockler from SAS Your Business. Welcome along. Thank you. Now, I've been trying to put you in a box. You're one of Australasia's leading consultants that facilitates improvement in businesses, and I'm really uncomfortable putting you in that box because there are so many facets to what mm -hmm. you have done, you do do, and now what you are going to do that we really do need to get into the nitty-gritty and find out a little bit more about you. Okay. Let's get stuck into it because it's not going to be long before you find out she's got an accent. <laughs> it's a pretty strong UK accent. So tell us about what you used to do in the UK before you came over here to Australia. Well, a few years ago, I was working for McDonald's. Um, that was my first real job in, um, in life and um, did a lot of work um, in taking the golden arches and, and anglicising it. And I suppose one of the key things that, that involved was some of the management programmes that were in place were very Americanised. So mm -hmm. it was about taking those programmes and, and making them into um, how we could be successful in the UK. Um, and one of the other major things was around franchising, which was something that hadn't been done in the UK before or um, was not expected to be done in the UK. And what I did was put the programme together and was involved with training the first franchisee in um, the UK. You also facilitated and worked with the team in, in putting in the first drive-throughs yep. mm -hmm. and right at the, the forefront of something new totally in the UK. Yeah, so with the drive-through, um, again, it was, a, it was a, a big milestone for the UK to have a drive-through because there's right. a lot of legal things around drive-throughs in the UK that you would never probably appreciate in this country. So one of the things that I was involved was was implementing the first drive-through, um, and that was in Manchester. And um, and then as a result of that, some of the work that we the other work that we anglicised was the types of conferences that you could have. And one of the things that I actually instigated was the introduction of an an, an English way of conducting a conference. It was an annual thing that was done with the managers and we actually used, for those people from the UK, a company called the Krypton Factor, which was a major TV program. And we actually brought the Krypton Factor to McDonald's. So you really stepped outside the square and, and really made it a difference in the UK and being able to change and implement something quite new over there. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it was very you know from a from the business's perspective, it was very stimulating because um, it was something that had to be done in terms of you know the culture in the UK is very different to American culture for obvious reasons, um, and so it was it was important for the business to be able to move forward in that regard. But also, it was seen as a flagship for McDonald's, um, the UK market. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Now you moved from the uh, the food industry into the banking industry, and uh, with again dramatic success. Yeah. So my um, when I first started started consulting, one of the key things, I actually worked with a major bank in the UK and um, I worked with them in terms of developing their forecast from what they really wanted to achieve in terms of loans and credit card applications. And what we implemented with them was a process which enabled the whole business to be, be able to see how successful they were. And as a result of that, they achieved the you know, success they'd never achieved before in terms of their forecast and the actual results. So, yeah. Fantastic. Now, 22 years ago, you came over to Australia for a very short trip, but I, I, I hear upon landing you got a, uh, a rude awakening to our culture. I did, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell us about well, that. it was it's very interesting story. because um, I'd been asked by a CEO in the UK for the company that we were consulting to to make sure everything worked really well in Australia because they, you know they're a bunch of layabouts who spend their time on holiday, and I arrived the weekend of the Melbourne Cup in Victoria, um, and I was listening to conversations like, oh, well, we're having to tomorrow off, we're having, you know, we don't actually come in on a Monday um, this, this week because it's the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, what have I come to? And so um, I quickly learnt about the culture of Australia, and particularly how Melbourne Cup stops um, a nation. It does stop um, the nation. It stops the nation. So that's always my little um, segue into <laughs> learning about Australian culture. Now, you, you didn't leave. Uh, no. And, and, we, <laughs> and we didn't kick you out. No. Uh, but you've been working with some sensational and some big companies over here, yep. and again, with some... Uh, some great results. Can you tell us just a few of those? Yeah, so I, over here I've worked you know, in many different industries from mining where I've worked with BHP and Rio fairly recently. Um, I've also been involved with um, the banking industry quite heavily. I did a lot of work for BT Financial Group, um, particularly around when they were having to um, reducing their costs in, in the sort of the early 90s, uh, sorry, late 90s. And um, 
Uh, I've also done work with manufacturing environments and also quite a lot of work with utilities and telecoms. So I've done a lot of work with Transpower over in New Zealand. So my stretch has gone over the Tasman. Um, they don't like my accent over there, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so quite a, a long reach of, of businesses and different kind of industries. Okay. So one of your fortes, from what I've been hearing, is you actually go into different organisations and find... I guess you could call them hidden profits and different mm -hmm. ways that they could do things, systemize and really turn the company around to increase their profits and, and a lot of savings as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a different way of thinking because what I try and get organizations to do is think differently about how they do things. Because mm -hmm. most organizations, you know, they kind of know where they want to go, and, but what they don't really understand is how they're getting there and what success they want to achieve as a result. So what I tend to do is work with how they can um, take the strategy they're looking for and mm -hmm. turn it into success. Um, and often that's something that a lot of organizations find difficult to do. They, you know, that, that turning of, of how you take strategy into the business. So, I, I guess that fits in with your SAS because you're working with the strategy that they want yep. and you're working towards the success, but it's the action in the middle that you can come in and help them with. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's the key thing is that what I find with businesses is that they, um, they often see the success that they're looking for or they've got numbers that tell them how well they're doing, but do they really know what's actually happening in the organisation? So, um, you know, SAS, which is strategy, action, success, is, is about getting to grips with what actually happens within the organisation, both in terms of, you know, how people behave with each other um, and also the processes that are used and also how the organisation is actually set up for that success. Excellent. Now, typically, what size businesses do you work with now? Um, look, I'm still happy to work with the, 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 the big organisations, as we've mentioned. Um, but, you know, typically maybe two, three hundred people where there are clearly lots of different teams working mm -hmm. towards the same goal, but not quite sure if they're all aligned about how they do that, because that's one of the big um, problems that I've observed in businesses. So, yeah, usually, you know, that kind of mark and, and businesses which maybe have um, you know, offices in different parts of the country that, you know, yeah. they're not just based in one place. Now, let's take another step sideways because you are doing things different to most people out there. And quite often when uh, companies engage consultants, they say, OK, we've got a consultant coming in yep. for the next three, four, five months. And we're really not sure uh, how much it's going to cost mm. us, particularly in this new oh, economy yeah. where things are tight. You've actually developed a system where you can go in within seven days, find out what they need to do and pretty well for a set fee. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, that is unheard of, but tell us a bit more about so, that. So, I mean, I suppose that, you know, if, I, if I'm honest about, you know, the, the, the world of consulting, a lot of people spend time in businesses to be able to build time. Let, you know, let's right, be fair yes. about it. So I think, however, if you ask most consultants that, you know, most people who have the experience that I have can, in a very short really space of time, give people the feedback they need on what it is that their organisation needs to do differently um, to actually achieve the success they're looking for. So the way I look at it is the the quicker you can give people the feedback they're looking for, the quicker they can get going with what it is they want to achieve and actually then make sure that the actions that I can provide them with that are going to achieve that success are implemented quickly as well. So that's pretty well why you've come up with the, the seven-day SAS yep. where you actually, let's <laughs> coin a phrase, get behind enemy lines, get down in the trenches, yes. find out exactly what they need <laughs> yes. and, and deliver a review of what they do need and give them some action steps to take it forward in Absolutely. seven days. Yep. And it's about working with the people to do that. So yes. there's a lot of things that we do in terms, I don't want to go into the details of what we do, right. but there's a lot of um, you know, information that we gather from the people within the business. So it's very much working alongside the people in the business. So much as we need to speak to the senior managers and the exec of the business, it's also getting to, even to the level of the processes that are used, because often in organisations, the processes that are being used are actually not supporting the strategy. And that's one thing we both look at in terms of how the organisation is set up, but also how they use the processes to support that strategy. So it's very much working with the people, yeah. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people out there that are in business, in particular the size that you were just mentioning there, that really do want to have something quick and fast and to go in and get a report or get a review to say, OK, this is what we need to do. Yep. And they can actually fit that straight within their budget straight yep. away mm -hmm. and, uh, and really streamline their processes, their systems, and mm -hmm. be able to certainly 
generates more profits. Absolutely, yeah. And look, you know, the key thing is, is in terms of the, 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 the price that we charge for this review is really within the realms of um, anybody's budget, I would think, in most organisations and the size that I've spoken about. Um, so what I'm looking to do is to make that decision easy for people. It's, it's not something they're going to have to necessarily take to, to the board to get a decision. It's something they can probably make a decision on there and then to actually um, decide to, to go in and do an SAS. Now, you've got one step further and stepping outside the boundaries of most people in their consulting. You've put a guarantee on what you do. Yes. So you go in there, you find the money. If they're not happy with what, yep. what you found, um, don't pay you. Don't pay me, yeah. Give me the watch back, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> you could put it that way. But I, I, the way you're doing things really just makes sense. If I'm a business and I want to find out how I could take my business forward, if somebody says, give me seven days... I'm yep. going to give you a, re a review of what you should be doing. If you don't like it, don't pay me. Absolutely. I mean, you're in, you're in tomorrow. Yeah. And look, at, you know, in, in the 20 or so years I've been in the consulting world, I think I've only been into one business where I haven't been able to say to them, here's the benefits. And that was because what they were asking us to do was, was ten, 10 steps beyond where they were. So my advice I gave them was very different what they were looking for. But the key thing is, is that, you know, having the experience that I've got and the background that I've got, usually the, um, the way in which the business operates can be seen pretty quickly and I can support the business in how they need to move forward. So after all of that, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people out there mm -hmm. that will want to find out more about what you do and yep. how they can contact you. There are going to be some details down below in the, in the video itself, so, but how can they contact you? So if you go to our website, which is sasyourbusiness.com, all the, the contact details you need are on there. Um, so we look forward to hearing from people. I told you it was going to be a lively interview, and we didn't even get into some of the sporting stuff that we were talking no. about before, but that can be for another day. Thank you so much for coming in. If I had a couple of extra hundred people working for me, I'd be queuing up to get you <laughs> as well. Great. But we might get you to give us a bit of a hand anyway. Steve Brosman here from Business Online TV, and we will have another great interview for you guys shortly. Cheers.